what's up y'all it's dr paul with liberty hill comics welcome to episode two of the series of america's best comics number 12 conservation project this is a golden age book from 1945 january great wartime cover by the incomparable alex schomburg in episode one we did our preparation, which is our assessment and documentation of the book, com coming up with the game plan for the conservation. In that episode, we did a walk through all the pages. We talked about the significance of the book. We did a lot of documentation, both on video and I took stills. We used the owl card to document the paper color in a number of different areas. And we came up with a game plan. The game plan is thus. We have an normal nine-step process to comic book conservation. One is preparation, we've already completed that. Two is disinfection, three is dry cleaning, four is tape removal, five is wet cleaning, six is chemical stabilization, seven is physical stabilization, eight is reassembly and pressing, nine is wrapping up of documentation. With this particular book, our game plan is no disinfection needed, dry cleaning, no tape removal needed, wet cleaning, chemical stabilization, and at least part of physical stabilization we're gonna combine. So we're gonna wet clean and chemically stabilize at the same time. We're gonna also do some physical stabilization at that point. With the book still wet, we're gonna mend it where we identified rips and tears. Then we're gonna dry everything out, press everything, reassemble the book, and of course, wrap up our documentation. So this episode, we're gonna get into the dry cleaning. I appreciate everybody coming along for the ride especially those that like and comment on the video and subscribe to the channel. So let's get into it. So with this book, we're gonna take the staples out to disassemble the book. I have already had this book in my humidity chamber for about three hours. The humidity chamber has 100% humidity, relative humidity. And you see now the paper is just a little bit more pliable than it was before. It was really easy to identify the centerfold. We had some difficulty doing that before. I'm gonna use a number of tools to remove these staples. One is just a block of Delrin that I machined and I put a hole in the correct distance for approximately halfway through a staple. I'm just gonna use this to stabilize the paper, especially once I get one of the prongs up. I'm gonna use this flawless staple tool from immaculatecomics.com. I like this, it works pretty well. This is Teflon coated, it doesn't mar the steel of the staple, and it's about the right size and shape to get in there, pry it up without doing undue damage to the paper, as long as you stabilize the paper. Before we get started, remember, clean and dry hands. I'm not gonna use gloves today, but I do have clean and dry hands. So what I'm gonna do is just gently open this book up and I'm going to use this flat block to stabilize. I'm going to get this tool under that staple and just pry it up. Easy does it. Okay, now I'm going to put that prong of the staple in this hole in this Delrin block. And I'm going to stabilize the paper now with that. That's going to hold the staple in place so that any force I use on this arm is against the body of the staple and not against the paper. I also have a micro spatula here. It's a little bit thinner than the Teflon coated tool. The staple is really tight. I'm just gonna get it started. I'm gonna go back to the block. So I prefer this to stabilize the body of the staple. And now we can pry it up without any trouble. 
And these staples look really remarkable. I think this bottom arm is going to be the easiest one to get under. There. And just a little bit of a lift out of that. Now I'm going to use the Teflon coated tool. Once I have one arm up, I'm going to stabilize the whole staple off that arm. And I think this will be time to turn it back around. Again, I'm going to use this micro spatula to get underneath initially. And then I'm going to use this Teflon tool so that I don't mar the staple. Teflon coated, obviously. Okay. Now I've got a little piece of painter's tape here. America's Best Comics number 12. I'm going to put top staple and bottom staple. And now I can remove the staples. This is obviously the top one. All right out, no problem at all. And what I'm going to do is the top of the top is here. So, I'm going to do the top of the top here, keep that orientation correct. Now I can retrieve this staple, hopefully. Looks like this may have been glued here at one point. Yeah, I think that's the case. We'll fix that when we mend it. But top is here, so I'm going to leave top, again, the correct orientation. And then I'm going to fold this up for now so that these are preserved. And none of the sticky parts of the tape are exposed that they're going to get on anything. And I'm just going to set that out of the way. All right, now we should be able to disassemble our book. Do this a number of different ways, but I don't think I quite need my ring light for this. There we go. I am going to, oh yeah, this was glued here. Well, we're going to have to add something, I think, to our list of tasks. We're going to have to separate this glue. So, let's do this. Looks like the glue, is the glue confined to the first page? Cover and first wrap? Not quite. Let's see what we have here. Okay, so here are the rest of the wraps. I'll set those aside as well. And this is just the cover and the first wrap. Okay. We may have to determine just how much glue. I am going to bring my light, my lamp back in and get a better view of this. Now I'm viewing it under magnification. Oh, 
it looks like this white stuff here may have actually been added as an intermediary material between the cover and this front wrap to glue this together. See how this white doesn't seem to match the color of the paper here or the underside of the cover here. So that's this white here. See on the underside of the cover here, Maybe that's the interior of the paper, or maybe it's some material that was added. But what we see here, these little spots, that's glue. So I think the proper way to separate these is going to be water. At least we'll try water. We'll start with water and see what happens. Ordinarily, we really strive to do dry cleaning first and then get on with our wet cleaning. This may be a situation where we're going to have to do that we're going to have to wet the pages just to separate the cover from the first wrap. And if that's the case, we're going to be effectively just jumping right into wet cleaning. I think we can do a little bit of dry cleaning. Obviously, I'm going to preserve this piece of paper here. You know where it goes. I'm going to set that with the center wraps. All right. So let's just try a little bit of dry cleaning in some of these light areas and see what happens. This is my preferred plastic eraser, the Pentel Click Elite. I cut these at an angle, which I learned from Sanderson. And let's just start right here. I'm going to stay in the white areas. This paper does not have a lot of gloss to speak of. I'm not too worried about removing gloss at this stage, but I'm still going to be very gentle. I'm just going to see how well this works. It looks a little bit brighter. Be very careful around these edges. We have these tears here, tear here. We have a crease here. This paper's very... I'm, I'm not sure if I'm willing to quite say fragile, but it's not super strong and robust. Let's go with that. I work on this moon area and see what happens. You can brighten this up a little bit to remove some soiling. I think that's working reasonably well. Could I be more aggressive? I'm sure I could. But I think we're going to reassess our plan. I think our best course now is to just gently remove surface debris, dirt that we can prior to immersing these in water in an attempt to separate them. The reason why you ordinarily do dry cleaning before wet cleaning is because when you wet clean something, you solubilize particles and those particles then diffuse away. Now they can diffuse away as in off and be rinsed away. They can also diffuse into your paper, deeper into your paper. So 
You don't want that if you've got a lot of surface contamination. You're actually going to be driving some of that dirt down into your paper. So that's why we dry clean before we wet clean. In this instance, again, we have to audible a little bit. We're going to be submerging these pages in water in an attempt to separate the glue between them. And so I'm going to just sort of gently go over this cover and find the worst spots of surface contamination and try to remove them so that when we are doing our dry clean, our wet cleaning rather, we're not gonna drive too much dirt and other contaminants down into the paper, into the substrate. So what I'm doing, again, is very gentle. I'm just removing surface contamination, such as I can prior to subjecting this to some solvents. I knew this was not a, an especially dirty book. So I really don't have to do a lot of work here. I'm really just hitting the whites. And I'm not gonna touch this edge. But here's an area like this will probably clean up well for us. No, well, I'm a bit surprised, it is removing it. So sometimes, and remember we have this slit right here, right? This crease and it ripped from there to there. So I'm stabilizing the paper here and I'm very gentle. So sometimes the eraser will remove things, but they get embedded in the eraser and you just want to kind of get rid of that part of the eraser. I think we did lighten that up a fair amount. This paper's looks like it's not really strong and this brownness does not look like surface contamination that's going to be easily removed with this eraser so i'm not inclined to get into there much i do think some of this may lighten up so i am going to get in here Look at this top edge. Some of this probably. Be very gentle here. All right. Another material that we can use here is a kneaded eraser. This works reasonably well on these Golden Age books and it is gentler on the pages. 
on the paper fibers themselves. I like to check it and just see if I'm dragging, because this can remove ink. I like to check it and just make sure that I'm not removing too much ink. Sometimes you remove just a little bit of surface ink and it's fine, because there's still plenty of ink left and it's still, in fact, it can take like a dull top layer of ink off and the ink underneath that super thin top layer can actually be more vibrant. So you can make a book look a little better by actually taking a, a small amount of ink off the cover sometime off the top. And the, again, very careful around edges, especially around anywhere where I see creases. I think that's worth doing. Make myself a little more room here. So I'm going to largely skip over this really black area and I'm going to try to hit some of these yellow areas and just brighten them up a little bit. Just removing some of the surface contamination on this book. This nearly 80 year old book. Again around this edge I'm going to be very gentle. Just gonna avoid doing any of the areas that look really fragile. Yeah, it's definitely lightening that yellow up. It doesn't look like it's bringing any yellow off. There is some ink in this kneaded eraser from some previous jobs. But that was blue, and I'm not going over any areas here that are blue. So I don't think that had anything to do with this paper right here. don't want to be in a hurry when you're doing this work. That is for sure. You want to take your time. I'll show you the contrast. So we just went over this area with the kneaded eraser. We have these two dark lines that I think are pretty well on the surface. I can get in here with this plastic eraser, this PVC eraser. I think can probably lift a bit more than I can with the kneaded eraser. Yep. Okay. Now we'll flip this back over and we'll get, we'll do the same thing with this kneaded eraser. We'll just drag it over the paper Stay away from the areas that look most fragile. Concentrate a little bit more on the lighter areas. Occasionally switch to a plastic eraser in areas where we think it's warranted. Check to make sure we're not lifting any inks. Again, spend more time on the lighter areas.
gently going over these inks. Again, just to remove surface contaminants. I'm going to do that through the body of the book here too, in the areas that I previously hadn't really put much effort into. And I'm pretty happy with that. I, I don't think we've taken much ink at all, and I think we've brightened this up. I don't think there's a lot more we can do by way of dry cleaning this. I think we're going to prep it for wet clean now. That'll be the next episode. So tune in soon for episode three, where we will start to do wet cleaning. And the first step will be to remove the glue here and separate the first wrap from the cover. Again, thanks for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate you. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, tell a friend, leave a comment, and until next time, take care of one another. Ooh.